As a chess player, Marozzi was a little lacking in imagination and aggressive spirit. His positional judgment, the greatest quality of the true master, was excellent. A very accurate player and an excellent endgame artist, he became famous as an expert on queen endings. In a tournament many years ago, he won a knight endgame against the Viennese master Marco, which has gone into history as one of the classic endings of this type, José Raúl Capablanca. Hello chess lovers, Sonnen here and in this video I want to share with you that same game mentioned by Capablanca where Hungarian chess master Geza Marotz is going to demonstrate a great endgame technique. Marotz is on the black side and he's playing against Austrian chess player Georg Marko. Marko was a very large man and he was jokingly referred to as the strongest chess player in the world. This game was played in 1899 in Vienna. Marco opened up with e4, to which Marozzi answered with e6. He goes for French defense and at this point we see the exchange variation, a line which has a reputation of a very drawish opening and this usually leads to boring drawish positions, you know. So we have a symmetrical setup, both players then are developing their queenside knights, rook e1, rook e8, black is ok to offer the exchange of rooks, both players are occupying the e-file, both rooks I mean, and then we see the exchange of rooks. So as the game is too long, I decided to uh, move the pieces by using an arrow, yeah, and again at this point we have a symmetry on the board, but with a6 black is breaking up the harmony and an exchange of rooks on e8 also followed. a3 queen d8. Uh, it is said that it was in here that Marco offered a draw which Marozzi declined through the tournament director, pointing out that Agreeing a draw before move 30 was not allowed by the tournament regulations. Queen one queen is 7 and the queens are also gone. Yep, we have a totally equal position, but Marozzi was in a very fighting spirit and he kept on playing. Knight c4, knight b1. Well, this is a strange move by Marco because this looks too passive. Well, why not going for an exchange of knights and then playing knight d3? You fear the knight c5 and in return you can win black pawn. Uh, but instead we see knight b1. And now gradually black is in starting to intensify the pressure and is managing to force white to acquire a defensive strategy. White knights now look miserable and all they can do is to stand on b1 and e1, thus covering some essential squares. Yeah, you can't move your knights, this is really very ugly, and at this point Marozzi is bringing his king on b6 to go for a5 advance. Yeah, in here uh, it was better to play knight d3. So, in this line white is sacrificing a pawn, but is managing to get a very nice counterplay. And then, for example, you can play knight d7 and come after black's kingside pawns. We have an equality, but instead we see king e2, and now gradually black is starting to gain advantage. King f2, and this is already a serious mistake. Still, at this point it was not too late to activate one of the knights. You are sacrificing again the a pawn, but in return you are managing to... Uh, Activate your position and yeah, at the cost of a pawn sacrifice, you are almost managing to equalize. Um, instead we see king f2, white decided to keep on making waiting moves, thinking that his position is super solid. But now Marotz is starting to demonstrate great endgame skills. First he is bringing his king on the king side in order to go for a breakthrough, f5. Pawn takes f5, pawn takes f5, king f2, and king h5. Black king looks very aggressive and it is gradually penetrating white's camp. King h2 and there comes black king. White can't move his knights 
And finally, at this point, we see knight d3, uh, and using that fact, using his lucky chance, black put his king on a very aggressive attacking square. Black is sacrificing the f pawn, but in return is winning the a pawn, and that's more important because this a pawn is very close to the first rank and stopping it is not an easy task. While in Black's case, Black will successfully neutralize White Pawn with his king. Yeah, and now White Knight is not only stopping the A Pawn, but is also guarding the pawn on C3, and at this point, as White is in Tsuktsavank, he's giving up the F Pawn. And now again, gradually, Black King is coming near. Gradually, Black is making a progress. And yeah, White's position is hopeless, but he still keeps on making moves. He wants to see how is Black going to uh, finish him up. Knight b2, knight c1. And at this point, Morosi made a very beautiful move. We can give a try to find it. And that move is actually knight d3. Another move which is allowing him to make his position better. The knight is of course untouchable because of this a2 move. And yeah, Black is uh, winning. Uh, that's why after uh, knight d3 we see knight b3 and knight e1 check. King d1 and another powerful move by Marozzi. Can you find that move? Well, uh, that's pretty simple and it's high time to go for a knight sacrifice, but in return you are starting to pick up white pawns. King c3, king d1, a2. King c1, d4. Just no way to stop black. These uh, black pawns are coming near and white is in trouble. Yeah, the final c5 looks very beautiful and at this point resignation followed. If b takes c5 then b4 and black pawn is reaching the first rank faster. We have a check and after king d1 let's go for, a, for an under promotion to rook and announce a checkmate. That's why after c5 resignation followed. Yeah, I really like Morozzi's endgame technique, his patience, his strategical planning, his positional understanding, his technical skills, everything was perfect and hope that you enjoyed this game as well. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video. Take care.